You know, I just w again, I would like to welcome everyone out to Living Word of Upland. But um, if, I'm going to ask if I can get a chair up here this evening. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, tonight, you know, I'm excited, you know, to be in the house of God. And, and, you know, how many of us know that, you know, we need to be excited, especially when we're going to serve God. Amen. You know, there, there has to be, uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. You know, we talked about, you know, in Ephesians about the armor. But tonight, how many of us know that, you know, that's a daily thing that we have to do is put on the armor. But even though, you know, there needs to be a passion. How many of us know without the passion, you know, the fire will die out. And, you know, God, if, if we're going to serve God in a mighty way, we need to carry that passion within our lives. But I don't know about you, you know, I'm ready to keep that fire going, you know, that fire, you know, when we first come to the Lord. And we need to keep that passion moving within our lives. And, you know, uh, tonight I, I want to get into the word and, and it's not going to be too long, but I, I just want to kind of share, you know, uh, uh, of the passion that we need to remain in. Amen. But as we know, you know, this year, 2020, you know, we started with God's vision. You know, the vision is of God. And, and we got to understand that as, as believers, you know, we got to continue to move in the call that God has called us. Regardless of circumstances that are taking place right now. Things that are going on around the world. But, you know, we got to keep that passion moving. Amen. Especially as we're called to be servants. Amen. For what God has called us to do. This evening, I want to share off of Romans, Romans from 9, uh, the chapter 12, verse 9 through 11. And um, right here, you know, it, it, it tells us about the passion that we need to carry. But I want to kind of start it off from 9. And if you can just say an amen when we get there. But the word of God reads like this. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourself. And I want to concentrate on this. It says, never lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. We got to keep our spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Then it goes, be joyful in hope, patience in afflictions, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Let's pray tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, tonight, Lord, for another day, Father God, a day that was not promised, Father God. But tonight, Lord, you chose to give us life, Father God, another day of opportunity, Lord. But tonight, Lord, I want to just, you know, ask, Lord, that you allow us to minister your word, Father God, and, and let it touch our hearts, Father God, in our minds, Father God. If our minds are not being in tune, Father God, I pray, God, that you remove our mindsets, Father God. That way we can understand what you're telling us today, Lord. But today, Lord, we still want to continue to give you the praise, the honor, and the mighty glory. In Jesus' name we say, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Jesus tonight. Amen. So how many of us want to keep our passion? Amen. You know, these are things that we got to understand. You know, the Bible in Romans 12, 11 says, never be lacking in zeal. Amen. But keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. You see, many of us are starting to lose our passion. I see it around. We start putting passion in other things, amen, that is not of God. And you got to understand that if you're going to make it in this army, we got to keep that passion of God within our lives, amen, because without Him, we can't do it on our own. I hate to burst your bubble, but you can tell your neighbor, God got to be in it. God has to keep me motivated, amen. But the way that we're going to get motivated is that we got to get in it. Tell your neighbor, we got to get in it. Many of us are not getting in it. That's why we're not receiving that passion. And that's where the attacks of the enemy come and start moving us from here to there. 
We got to understand when there's a passion of God, we're going to continue to move in the call that he has called us. But as soon as that we stop, when we stop praying, when we start reading our word, when we start fellowshipping, that's when we're going to end up losing our passion. The passion has to be because we got to get in it. Tell your neighbor, we got to get in it. But while we're in it, we got to live it as well. Many of us are losing our passion because we're not getting in it. You see, again, never be lacking in the zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. Fervor meaning the passion and enthusiasm. What is your passion tonight? Is it to serve God? Is it to serve the world? You see, you got to understand what are we, what's moving us tonight? You see, but it says, keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. I'm going to tell you like this, if you want to keep igniting, if you want to keep adding to the fire that's within us, you know, when we first come to the Lord, when we first come broken down, you know, we need that fire, that fire that is in us, amen, that we want to tell everybody about Jesus Christ. But as soon as that we start coming and things start getting better in life, how many of us know we start forgetting? We start forgetting where we came from. But also, let me say the definition of pa passion, amen. It's any powerful or compelling emotion or feeling as love or hate. Like I said again, what's moving us tonight? Where is our passion at? Are we being faithful? Are we being committed to what God has called us? Is it in that passion to serve Him? Or is it in the passion to serve ourselves? You see the biblical definition in Christianity. I'm going to share what the passion means. From the, the Latin verb. Patur it says. Passes some. It says. Meaning to suffer. In this passion that when we're going to serve God. You got to tell your neighbor. We're going to suffer. We're going to bear and we're going to endure. Because in order to have the passion of God, we're going to have to go through these things. If you're going through something tonight, hallelujah, praise God. But endure in the process. Because I'm going to tell you like that. The Bible says that God will never leave us nor forsake us. But it has to be in the, His passion, amen. We got to remain. Many of us are not remaining because we're not standing firm. We got to continue to move in the call. We got to continue to move by his spirit. Amen. But we need to be passionate. We need to add that fire within our lives. Also, when we're going to go through the suffer, we're going to have to bear and again endure through things. From also which it means to be patient and have patience. You know, many of us, like I said, we're in that microwave generation. We want it now. We want to cook a, a nice pot roast in 10 minutes. I hate to bust your bubble, but sometimes it's going to take a little longer than that. Because the Bible says that we will be tested. There is things that got to go within our lives, but it's good. If you're going through something right now, it is good because what is developing is developing our faith in our Christ Jesus. Amen. How many could I get a clap offering tonight? And then also, the Bible, it says, never be lacking in zeal. And again, the definition of zeal is defined as passion or enthusiasm for something. Meaning, never lacking in it. If we're going to serve God, God wants us to stay on fire. Amen? You know how a fire, a fire will consume a fire will move you. A fire will burn, amen, and start spreading like a wildfire. But many of us are trying to walk in this walk, but in reality, sometimes we're just blowing smoke. Tell your neighbor, look at them. Do they look smoky right now? They are pat them in the back or fan them up, amen. So now zeal, the definition of zeal is defined as passion or an enthusiasm for something. But like I said tonight, what is your passion tonight? Is it to serve God or is it to serve yourself? Amen. If your answer is to serve yourself, then you're just serving the world. Amen. And then we wonder why things never happen right. Or we wonder why we end up back in the same place. Or we wonder why it never worked out. 
Because why? Because we lost our passion. Amen. And as we continue, our opening scripture tells us never to be lacking in zeal. Meaning having that godly passion to bring commitment. You see, when you have that passion, you'll be committed into the things of God. What are you committed tonight? Are you committed to serve them or are you committed to serve yourself again? And it goes on. Too many times we let our the passion of the flesh, meaning the carnal, lead us. Amen. And it's not of the things of God. You see, I'm going to talk about the, a little bit about the worldly passion. And the evil desires that our emotions stir up in us. The flesh desires. We know what the fruits of the flesh are. But we also got to understand that what we need to carry is the, the fruits of the spirit. Amen. You see, wherever your passion is at, that is where all your time goes. If your passion is, it can be and, and I'm going to share with them afterwards. I don't want to get ahead. But it's either going to be in the world or it's going to be for God. And that's the thing right now, you know, with all everything that's going on in the world. We really need to wake up. We really need to wake up because, you know, the time, the time is crucial. Time is running out. And many of us are still not understanding it or many of us are still not waking up spiritual because we're looking at the circumstance. And some of us ain't even even looking at the circumstance on what's going on. So that's how blind we are. But the passion really has to be stirred up within our lives. Why isn't it being stirred up? Why isn't it moving? Why, why ain't not having that hunger for God? We got to ask ourselves again. Are we in prayer? Are we reading our word? Are we seeking the Lord first thing in the morning? Or are we still trying to satisfy our own self? Amen. Are we eating breakfast before praying? Hello, somebody. No, I'm talking to somebody out there. So you got to understand wherever your passion is at, that is where all your time will go. If it's in the world, it's going to continue to go in the world. If it's with God, it's going to continue to go with God. Remember, there's nothing in the middle. So you've got to understand that. You see, this passion, your passion will move you towards your purpose. So I'm going to tell you like this. If it's worldly things, that's where you're going to be moved towards your purpose. God is trying to wake us up to understand that, that hey, time's running out. We need to either wake up or, you know, we need to get right. Or in other words, like they say, or you're going to get left. I don't know about you, but this passion, I want to continue to keep it. And sometimes, you know, it, 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 it feels like it, it dies down. But then again, I got to get back into it. I got to get into that, 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 find that, that passion in my heart. Amen. Get into the word, get into prayer, start seeking them with a fervent prayer. Amen. To ask them, hey, Lord, I don't want to lose it because I know that I can't do it by myself. I need him in my life because without him, I'm nothing. Amen. Could I get an amen tonight? But this is what it is. Your passion will move you towards your purpose. Passion is required to move us to our calling. See, many of us don't even understand that we have a calling in our lives. Yet alone, we barely make it to church when it's open. You know, now that we're live streaming, you know, some of us might even not even come on time. We'll watch it later. Because why? Because we're not passionate for God. You got to understand that this should be your life. You know, this is what he wants us. He wants us to, to be the first thing that's coming. Amen. It's him. Because we got to understand this. Our life here on this earth is just for a moment. Yeah, it might seem long. Some of us that are living. But while we're here, we should make the best of it to serve our mighty king. Amen. Amen. So in other words, passion is required to move us to our calling. When you get more into the things of God, you're going to understand your calling. If you don't get into the things of God, you're not going to understand your calling. That's where the enemy will attack us. 
The enemy will try to derail us and distract us and give us even discouragement so that way we will not respond to the call of God. But as we move on, true passion has to do with the heart. Where's your heart tonight? You see, God should be the seat of your passion. Your seat of your passion. Meaning God should be in our hearts. Amen. amen. You know, many of us talk about that we're believers of God. Amen. Many of us will raise our hands up. Hey, hallelujah, praise God. I believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in everything. But in, in reality, we start looking at our lives when nobody's there. How do we act? Are we still acting holy? Amen. Or the only things holy is our, our socks. Amen. You got to understand that they, they, when it's a passionate of God, that zeal, amen, that zeal is going to move you. People will notice you that are different, amen. But if you're still walking the same, amen, as when you first came in, there's no change in your life. Then are you really walking in the things of God? We can tell anybody, hallelujah, make it look like we're, we're on fire. But what's going on inside, amen? Amen. So again, true passion has to do with the heart. God should be the seat of your passion. When God is in your heart, amen, believe me, you'll continue to move. Matthews 3.11 says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. You see, when the Spirit of God, when we accept Jesus Christ into our hearts, amen. You know, when you first come to the Lord, you have that seal. You have that passion. You have that one to just tell everybody about Jesus. Amen. But what happens? It's just for a moment. Because we're not getting into what we need to be getting into. Amen. Amen. You see, the Holy Spirit should be our passion. We need to feed the Spirit of God. And the way we feed it is by in, being in our word and continue to be praying and asking God to give you that direction. Colossians 3.23 reads like this. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. You see... As we go on, you know, we got to understand we still have a church. We still have a men's home. You know, you know, we're, we're being blessed in a, in, a, in a mighty way. But it, it, it seems like who's still getting involved, you know, in the church while we're still shut down? Are we being faithful in our tithes? Are we still being committed? Amen. Checking up on pastors. Hey, how are you doing? You know, as me, you know, my work still, it's always in the home, amen, right now that the opportunity is there. You know, I'm, I'm there with the landscaping, doing for the home. You know, my, my, my heart is to do the work what God has called me. Now, as, as, as members of the church, are we getting involved still? Amen? Yeah. Well, you can ask yourself, where is your passion? Where is your passion? Is it? In the things of God. You know, even though that we're shut down, God is still moving. Amen. As a matter of fact, um, Friday and Saturday, we're going out to Pastor Otavio's. You know, to go out there, they're going to do a, 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 a food, you know, giveaway. And we're going to go out there, the men's home. But still, you know, because it's a passion to serve. It's a passion to serve God. And we're there, you know, to, to where God calls us, hey, as soldiers, to continue to move in that purpose and in that calling. Amen. Yeah. So then it goes on. People without godly passion do not acknowledge the presence of God in all things. Meaning, are we just allowing God to come in certain things in our life? Are we really... Allowing them to come in in everything of our lives. In other words, these people only call on God when they're in a hard place. You know who you are. Amen. 
You see, passionate people wake up and are grateful for another day. Yeah. Are you being grateful tonight? Amen. Another, as we continue to go on, we need to be passionate in our praise and worship, prayer and reading our word. Amen. We need to have that zeal. Amen. If you want that fire to move within your life so that way you can go ahead and reach out people. What you've truly been called to do, even if it's to evangelize. Amen. Even if it's just to give someone hope, maybe to bring someone to Jesus or maybe even to tune in. On a night, you know, to say, come on, let's watch this service. Let's get passionate for the Lord. Let's get fed. Let's feed our spirit. Whatever it is, you've got to understand that we need to keep that zeal going within our lives. If not, it's just going to go out. Amen? Amen? So we need to be passionate in our praise and worship. Are you being passionate in our praise and worship? Amen. Or are we just looking at it like... Another song. Are we just there. Standing there. Or maybe some of us. Maybe just walking away. I don't know about you. But I need to be passionate in that. When there's praise. When there's worship. Amen. The Bible identifies that we're going to continue to praise and worship him when we go to heaven. We got to think about it right now. If we're not even praising and worshiping him now. Then in reality. That's what we're going to be doing in heaven. I say just get ready. Amen. And then it goes on. If you can't be passionate for God, you might just be passionate for yourself. Amen. Yeah. What is moving you tonight? I want to share a couple of things that can be passion killers. All right. You got to understand passion doesn't remain the same. A fire once started either spreads or it dies. The fire in your life right now, is it spreading or is it just dying out? You see the passion killers. If you don't feed the fire or leave it alone, the fire will die out. If the fire is dying out in your life right now, maybe you need to start feeding it. Here are some examples of passion killers. Some passion killers can be your jobs. It makes you lose focus. It makes you lose, lose focus in what your true calling is. Jobs, you see, we got to understand this. <clears throat> the devil can bless us as well. And he'll bless us. To distract us or derail us from what God wants to do in your life. Also, it can be relationships. Being with the wrong people. Being around. Not only else, passion killers can be material possessions. Amen. You want to have what the other person has. And you're going to do all it takes for it. No matter, even if it's to take you away from what God has called you to do. And wealth may seem like a blessing, but they can be passion killers as well. Amen? Many of us, I, I, I truly believe, you know, you know, before in my life, I was pretty blessed. But at the end, I allowed money and all that to get in my way. And it took me away from the things of God. So I understand that. But now, you know, even from starting to work back from making an $8 an hour minimum wage. Things that I never really made in my life. I used to make a lot more than that. But you know what? I, I, I took care of it. Amen. And I worked with all my heart, even though that it was just a little money. And little by little within time, you're talking about 11 years now or 10 years now, just continue to be faithful to my God, amen, yeah. to serve him. And within time, you know, it was a process, but you know what, just being faithful. Tell your neighbor, we need to be faithful mm -hmm. to keep this passion moving. And then also, you got to understand that the devil wants to kill your passion. If you're passionate for God, 
If there's a fire within your life, amen, if it's to do the will of God, then you understand. But if the fire has already died out in your life, you're already got to understand that the devil's already did what he had to do. You see, he is an imitator of God. He will bless you to kill your passion for God. Anything to get your eyes and heart away from the things of God. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor or tell, don't even tell your neighbor, but tell that devil to get away from me, Satan. I'm going to share right now, um, on tonight, passion killers, four of them. And then on Sunday, I'm going to just show you what we need to be in the passion. Amen. But four passion killers that I want to share. Number one is they can be a passion killer. Complacency. How many of us know that many of us like to get comfortable? When we're complacent, it, it's going to kill our passion to do what God is. You see, the definition of complacency is a feeling of quiet pleasure or security. Often while unaware of some potential danger, defect, or the like. Amen. You know, many of us, I believe... We like to be complacent, amen. Being secured. I'm secured here. I don't want to take a challenge for God because at least right here it's going good. But how many of us know that we got to get out of that mindset? Because we serve a mighty God. A God that wants to take us into another level. Right now is the opportunity as people that are going, you know, all the stuff that's going on around the world. It's the opportunity that we need to start getting with that passion, that fire, amen, to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Could I get an amen? Yeah. In Romans 13, 11, in the app, ver app version, it says, the Amplified Bible, do this knowing that, that this is critical time. It is already the hour you to awaken from your sleep. Tell your neighbor, you need to wake up. Stop being complacency, amen. Stop being just complacent where you're at. We need to start waking up. In other words, of spiritual complacency, we need to wake up. For our salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed in Christ Jesus. You got to understand that, that the days that keep going on, it's closer to Jesus Christ. But what are we doing right now tonight? Is that passion, is that fire still in your life? I don't know about you, but I need to start fanning it out. Amen. Also, complacent people feel secured and smug. They always say, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. Hey, pastor, don't trip. I got you. I'll do it later. Amen. I'm going to tell you, when you're complacent like that, it's not going to work like that. You're going to lose your fire. You need to say, okay, I'll do it now. Be ready, amen, at all. Stay like it says. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. But be ready at all times. I, 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 my spiritual father, you know, my pastor, you know, I always, you know, he said, stay ready. Even at times when I'm being nervous, amen. But we got to stay because I wouldn't stay in that complacency. You see, complacency will kill your fire and put you to sleep. Tonight, are we going to sleep? Another uh, passion killer that will be number two is difficult circumstances. In other words, when the circumstance gets ugly, amen, when you're serving God, I'm going to tell you like this, it's going to get ugly at all times, sometimes a lot. But then again, when you stay on that course, amen, it will get better. Hebrews 10, 36, where it goes on like this, where you have a need of patience, endurance. In other words, to bear up under difficult circumstances without compromising. And tell your neighbor, we can't compromise. So that when you have carried out the will of God, you may receive and enjoy to the full what is promised. Amen. You see, Paul was a man of God that went all the way, amen. He didn't settle for less, all the way to death. 
But you got to understand that that's the same kind of passion that we need to have. We need to stop compromising. In other words, don't compromise your passion for the world. Instead, for the things of God. I don't know about you, but we need to stay in that course. We need to continue to fight. We need to continue to fight for our families. There's still loved ones, amen. Our kids, amen, that are still out there stuck in darkness. Because why? Because we lost the passion where we can't even tell our kids that Jesus loves them. And he's the only way that we'll make it into heaven. But that's the thing because we're always compromising. Oh, no, it's all right. It's all right. No, it's not all right. Read your Bible. The Bible says, hey, we need to bring this. We need to tell them the good news. Amen. But then we become those compromising Christians. Don't compromise your passion for the world. Instead, for the things of God. Don't let hard times and trials kill your passion. Amen. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you like this. As you continue to remain. The blessing will come right behind you. When you give up. That's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to quit. Amen. He wants us to stop in our tracks. Amen. So that way he can go ahead and laugh at us. Amen. But I'm going to tell you like this. In the, in the kingdom of God. We shouldn't be quitters. We need to keep Pressing forward, amen. And endure through the process. Endure through the suffering, amen. And everything that is going to come our way. Amen. So let don't let hard times and trials kill your passion. Right now, you know, we're going through some times. We can't even open the church. But hey, get alone. Like I said, we can live stream. But we need to be even faithful in the live streaming as well. For those that are tuning in, tune in, amen. If it's your church time, hey, get in it. Amen, not say, oh, I'll watch you later. By then, it's just like, hey, it's a rerun. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to receive what God has for my life. Yeah. And then for number three, another passion killer is an unbalanced lifestyle. Amen. How's your lifestyle today? Is it balanced or is it unbalanced? Did you eat your Wheaties tonight or this morning? Or, you know, an unbalanced lifestyle. An unbalanced lifestyle looks like right here in the scripture in James 1 8. Being double minded man, unstable and restless in all his ways. And everything he thinks, feels, or decides. Always making wrong choices, amen. Being double-minded, you know, one day doing the things of God, the next day, man, forget that. I, I got to do my thing. Being double-minded people are out of whack, amen. Your passion will be unbalanced, amen. In other words, being unstable is unbalanced. Unstable in your thinking, you're on fire one day and depressed the next. Have you ever seen a Christian like that? Be on fire, you know, jumping for the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the next time you see them, oh, man, it's all bad. Because why? It's unbalanced. You've got to understand that we're going to go through things. The Bible says that we're going to go through these suffering. But as long as there are passion that is there, it's going to continue to remain standing. Not allowing that enemy one of his lives or anything that comes our way. That we're going to just throw in the towel. I'm going to tell you like this. I'm not throwing in my towel until I come home to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So in other words, as we keep on going, you're on fire one day and depressed the next. Ephesians 5.10 says, trying to learn by experience what is pleasing to the Lord and letting your lifestyle be examples of what is most acceptable to him. Your behavior, expressing gratitude, to God for your salvation. You got to understand. Jesus paid a price for you already. You're not your own. If you believe you're your own. You got it all messed up. Jesus died a brutal death for us. Amen. For us you know. So we can have life with the father in him. And we got to understand that. That he paid a price. For you. But many of us are in understanding it. And that's why we're still doing our own things. 
You see, an unstable life will ruin your testimony, amen? You know, many of us have amazing testimonies that we know we shouldn't even be here, amen? And the last one, another passion killer will be empathy. The definition of empathy means absence or suppression of passion, emotions or excitement, lack of interest or in concern for the things that others find moving or exciting. Many of us have empathy in our lives. It's only what we want to do. Amen. It's nothing of God. It's our own life. Empathy, you know, those ones that are just, uh, you can put it in compromising. You know, are we taking our notes? Are we writing things down? You know, what's being ministered from the pulpit should be like our lifestyle. It should be our lifestyle, amen. And notes are good. But empathy, you know, we start looking at lack of interest. What is motivating you tonight? Is it the interest of God or not? What happens when empathy makes your love for God go cold? That's what it happens. You get cold, a cold heart. You become cold-blooded, amen. And then when we lose, when we get in this mindset, we also lose our vision. You know, this year, it's God's vision. 2020. And if you're not awake, if you're not spiritually awake, you're missing the whole purpose. Because you got to understand, this year is the vision of God. 2020, are you ready? And look at the way the enemies already came in attack mode. Because why? He knows he's running out of time. But also, we're running out of time to reach out for the people of God. You'll start losing your vision. Proverbs 29, 18 says, Where there is no vision, meaning no revelation of God in his word, the people are unrestrained. But happy and blessed is the one who keeps the law of God. So we need vision, amen. And then also, we lose our perspective. When we have empathy in our lives, we lose our perspective. We get easily influenced. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4.18 reads like this. So we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are unseen. For the things which are visible are temporal, just brief and fleeting. But the things which are invisible are everlasting and imperishable. Amen. Don't lose your perspective. Amen. Understand that it's only going to be in the things of God. But tonight, if we can all stand, amen. And tonight, church, I want to just keep, you know, don't let passion killers kill your passion for the things where God has called you. Especially right now. Like I said, time is coming close. That we need to start getting right with God, amen. We need to start getting right in his word. We need to start getting right. We need to start reading it. We need to start applying it. And we need to start praying, amen. So that way we can keep that zeal going. That way we can share the good news with people and our neighbors, amen. And you, it's not far where you need to look around to see everything that's going on, amen. But tonight, I want to change the course of this service and ask if there's anybody out there that wants to say the sinner's prayer with me. Just if you're there, if you're tuning in, if we can just all bow our heads and repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I accept you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died on the cross and I believe that you arose on the third day. I believe that you sit at the right hand of the Father. Today, Jesus, I repent of all my sins. Come into my life to direct my life from here and then on. And through it all, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. In Jesus' name we say, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's give it up to the Lord. And then tonight, I'm just going to go ahead and close this service. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, tonight, Lord. I pray, Father God, over this service, Father God, over your words, Father God, that just ministered into our hearts, Lord. 
I pray, Father God, that you give us a clear vision, Father God, to understand, Father God, that we keep that fire, Father God, that zeal within our lives, Lord, to continue to serve you, Father God, in a mighty way, Lord, for our calling, Father God, that you have called us for, Father God, so we can continue to respond, Father God, especially in these critical times, Lord. But tonight, Lord Jesus, we continue, Lord, to give you the praise, the honor, and the mighty glory. In Jesus' name we say, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Jesus. We'd like to welcome you guys out to Living Word again of Upland. And have a blessed night. God bless tonight. Amen.